Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here, uh, and in today's video, we're going to be taking an early look at the Week 2 NFL slate on DraftKings, talk through the, the Week 2 main slate, talk through some plays that stand out to me early on in the week. I'm recording this video on Tuesday, so obviously this is a very you know, early look at the slate. There's, not a, there's really no projections out available right now. There's no ownership projections available. This is just you know, me giving my thoughts on the slate and what stands out to me. So we're going to talk through the, you know, kind of a, a quick breakdown of each position. We'll build out a first look lineup, talk through some stacks that I like, you know, sort of like a GPP lineup that we can build. Um, but before we do get started, guys, as always, if you enjoy these DFS videos, if they help you out, make sure you hit that like button down below. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. Um, and if you guys are new to the channel, this video is sponsored by Prize Picks. You guys can check out Prize Picks linked down below in the description. Or just when you sign up for Prize Picks, use promo code NOAH. You will get your first deposit match up to $100 when you sign up for Prize Picks with my promo code. And for those of you that have never heard about Prize Picks, they are a DFS pick'em site. They are very, very big now. They've really, really grown since I partnered with Prize Picks. I've been partnered with Prize Picks for, for almost, I think, over two years now. They have really grown since I first partnered with them. They're one of the biggest DFS apps now available. Uh, but they're a pick'em site, so it's very simple, very easy to use. You just pick more or less on a player's projection. And you can see that they already have projections posted for the week two slate for Thursday night football. They got games or they got props up for Sunday and they got um, some props up for Monday night's games as well. There's actually two games on Monday night. So you can see all that's available on their board already for NFL. They also offer a ton of other sports like college football and WNBA, soccer, MLB. Um, they do discounted projections all throughout the week. It's t I'm recording this video on Tuesday, so it's Taco Tuesday on Prospects. And you can see they have some discounts available on Tuesday. So it's a really fun site to use. I definitely recommend you guys give Prize Picks a try. And if you're not signed up for Prize Picks, again, use that promo code NOAA. You'll get your first deposit matched up to $100 when you sign up for Prize Picks with my promo code. And I do provide uh, Prize Picks plays for free on this YouTube channel. Usually I make a Prize Picks video for every primetime game, so Thursday night football, Monday night football. Um, and I also do a video for the full Sunday slate of games. You guys can definitely check those out You know, if you want to get some Prize Picks plays uh, from me. But. Let's talk through the week two slate on DraftKings, and we'll start off at the quarterback position. And looking at quarterback this week, you know, there's, uh, as always, there's going to be a lot of good options to pay up for. You've got Patrick Mahomes um, in a game against Jacksonville that, that is expected to be pretty high scoring. Right now, this KC Jacksonville game does have the highest total on the slate, 51 and a half. I think Mahomes is definitely going to get some some ownership this week. You've got Josh Allen after a rough game on Monday night. You know, it feels, this feels like a bounce back spot for Josh Allen playing at home against the Raiders. Lamar Jackson had a rough week one, but this also feels like a bounce back spot for him against Cincinnati. You know, it's a tough divisional game, but I do expect Lamar to play much better than he did, you know, obviously last week. Justin Fields, um, you know, against Tampa Bay, you could look to. Justin Herbert against Tennessee, like that matchup a lot. Tennessee uh, been very vulnerable against the past the last few seasons. They've been a tough team to run on, but the way you can beat Tennessee is through the air. So I definitely like Herbert at 7K. A lot of guys you could pay up for at quarterback this week. But when I was looking at you know the the or the uh, the you know slate before I started recording this video, there were some cheap quarterbacks that I really liked this week, kind of like in the 6K and 5K range. Um, Joe Burrow obviously was very disappointing in Week One, but you would expect a much better game from Joe Burrow this week at home against Baltimore. Again, tough divisional matchup, but I do expect Burrow to play much better. He's only 6,900. Again, that KC Jacksonville game is expected to be very high scoring, highest total on the slate. Trevor Lawrence at 6,700, I think, will be you know relatively popular. You got Dak Prescott against the Jets. Don't love that matchup, but Dak at home tends to play really well. Um, Anthony Richardson, we saw the, the upside that Anthony Richardson has in week one. Um, you know, threw, uh, threw the ball 37 times, threw for 223 yards, also had 40 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown. He offers a lot of rushing upside. So Anthony Richardson, one of these guys that I don't think you really have to stack with in, in tournaments, but we did see Michael Pittman have a really good game in week one. You could obviously stack Richardson with Pittman in GBPs if you wanted to go that route. Pretty decent matchup for Richardson against the Texans. That game has a really low total, but I think Richardson, um, just with his dual threat upside, is going to be someone that I think is going to always be in play for DFS, especially with the price you know, where it is. And then the Seattle-Detroit game is another game that really stands out to me this week. It actually has the second highest total on the slate, 47 and a half. You got Jared Goff coming in at 6,200. You got Geno Smith coming in at 5,900. I think both these guys look like pretty interesting options. Geno Smith, I know he was really... Really bad in week one, did not have a great game against the Rams, but I like Geno Smith to bounce back this week. 5,900 is a really cheap price tag for him, and this is a pretty good matchup. Now, I do expect Detroit's defense to be, to be better than they have the last few seasons, 
But last season, Detroit did allow the most fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks. And it was pro- it was by a pretty wide margin. It was by you know over a two points. Um, Detroit was definitely the best matchup for quarterbacks last season. Now, is that going to be the same this season? I guess we'll have to wait and see. But this is you know this game is going to be played in Detroit in the dome. Detroit, I know a lot of their home games last few seasons have been very high scoring. It seems like you know anytime there's a game played in Detroit, it always winds up being a shootout. And that's how it kind of was you know like five six years ago for the Saints. It felt like every time there was a a Saints home game back when Drew Brees was on the team and Michael Thomas was, you know, playing well. Felt like there was always, you know, high-scoring games in the Superdome. Well, now it feels like it's Detroit. You know, every time there's a game in Detroit, it's it winds up being high-scoring. I know Geno Smith last year against Detroit played really well, had a really big game. I like Geno Smith at 5,900. We're going to use him as our first-look quarterback this week. There's a lot of guys you could go to, but I think he stands out quite a bit in what should be a decent matchup. And if we're going to play Geno Smith in tournaments, we definitely want to stack him up with either one of or both of DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Now, looking at their prices this week, you got DK Metcalf coming in at 7K. You got Tyler Lockett coming in at 6,100. You could double stack these two guys, like in a scenario where where Geno Smith throws for let's say 300 yards, three touchdowns. That probably means that you know one of DK or Lockett's doing really well, if not both of them. Now, last week it was DK that had the better game. He called a touchdown. Had five or five targets, three catches for 47 yards. Lockett was a big disappointment last week. Did not get a ton of volume, only four targets, two catches for 10 yards. For whatever reason, I don't know why this is, but for whatever reason, I can just never, I never get these guys right. The weeks I play Lockett, Metcalf goes off, and the weeks I play Metcalf, Lockett goes off. At first look, I'm kind of liking Lockett a little bit more this week just because he's cheaper, coming off a bad game. You would expect him to bounce back, but Again, if you want to double stack um, you know, Gino with DK and, and Lockett, you can do that. But let's stack up Gino with Lockett at 6,100. And if we're going to be stacking up, you know, we almost always want to use a run back. You don't have to run back. But if you look at the, the winning GPP lineups every week, there's almost always going to be you know, a quarterback receiver stack or a quarterback two receiver stack. And then usually there's going to be a player from the other side of that game. Just because in a scenario where our quarterback is scoring a lot of points, throwing touchdowns, that's going to push the other team's offense to, to put up points as well. And a lot of times, if you can just you know connect on that high-scoring game, for example, week one, it was the Dolphins and Chargers game. You know The winning stack was Tua with Tyree Kill. Obviously, Tyree Kill had a massive game. You don't expect receivers to put up that type of games every week, but that's always in the range of outcomes when you're looking at stacking games. There can always be that one game that just really shoots out. Not saying it's going to be Seattle-Detroit, but it could. You know This game does have the second-highest total on the slate. And if we're looking for a run back option with our Seattle stack, I mean, there's a lot of guys we could consider on Detroit. You know, you've got the running backs, Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery. Montgomery got some pretty good volume on the ground in week one, but he didn't get any usage in the past game, which is definitely a concern for me. Zero targets, did get 21 carries though, got into the end zone, wasn't very efficient on those carries, but again, the volume was there. I do expect David Montgomery to get some ownership this week at 5,800 in a pretty decent matchup against Seattle. So you could go to Dave Montgomery. I guess you could go to Jameer Gibbs, although I think he's more of like a lower-owned GPP dart throw. You could obviously go to Amon Ross St. Brown. No issue with him. But I'm looking at Sam Laporta as a cheap tight end option. At 3,900, he correlates with our Geno Smith Lockett stack. And if we look at Laporta last week, he, he did get five targets, five catches for 39 yards. Obviously not the greatest game, but I was looking at some usage in week one, and Laporta did play on 83% of the snaps. So he was used as close to like an every down tight end. There's obviously there's been a lot of hype around Laporta coming into the season. He's expected to be a every down tight end for for the Lions, and we know this Lions offense is a relatively pass heavy offense. At home, you expect them to put up some points. They played really well. Their offense last season played really really well at home. Jared Goff played a lot better at home as well. And I'm usually always trying to save money at tight end. This is a you know, week one. It was kind of easy to pay up at tight end because there was so much value. There's not as much value this week, but um, I'm definitely looking to save some money at tight end, and I, I do like Laporta as a run back to our Geno Smith Tyler Lockett stack. So that's kind of where we can start our lineup. We'll have our stack with our run back option. Let's take a look at the running back position if, and see if we can find some plays here. So for running back, again at the top, you can you can't really go wrong with any of these guys at the top. I will say that like Christian McCaffrey, Austin Eckler, they're not in the best matchups this week. McCaffrey going on the road to face the Rams, but McCaffrey, I mean, he is just a matchup proof running back. He gets so much volume. Last week, even in a tough spot on the road against the Steelers, got 22 carries, 152 yards, and a touchdown. Got also five targets, three catches for 17 yards. He's pretty much locked into 20-plus touches a week, if not more than that. 
You can never go wrong with CMC. Austin Eckler, another guy that's going to get a lot of volume, especially in the passing game. I will say, though, Tennessee, again, one of the tougher teams to run on. Last season, Tennessee was a major pass funnel. The way you beat Tennessee was through the air. It was really hard to, to run on them. We'll see if that remains the same this season. Don't think it's the best matchup for Austin Eckler, but again, Eckler has shown to be a matchup-proof running back. You got Saquon against the Cardinals. I think that's a decent spot. You got uh, Bijan Robinson at home against Green Bay. I do expect Bijan to get a good amount of ownership this week. Um, you know, just the volume for him in Week One was pretty good. The the usage in the passing game was really good. He got six targets. Anytime you can get running backs on DraftKings that can catch five, six, seven balls, that just adds to their floor and ceiling because of the you know full PPR scoring system that DraftKings uses. Um, so I'm definitely interested in Bijan. Tony Pollard, great matchup, or I wouldn't say great matchup, but definitely at home against the Jets, I think is in a pretty decent spot. Pollard this season is expected to have a pretty big role. He would have obviously gotten way more touches in week one had they not blown out the Giants. He only touched the ball 16 times, but he was very efficient with those touches. Got two touchdowns, 22 draftings points. Pollard's probably going to be a guy that you can just play in DFS every week unless he's just you know priced super, super high, which this week, obviously, he's not. But the guy that I want to talk about at running back is Derrick Henry. So, Derrick Henry, like the spot a lot for him at home against the Chargers. Last season, the Chargers were a major, major run funnel. They gave up a ton of fantasy points to running backs. They gave up a ton of rushing yards to opposing running backs. Last season, the Chargers gave up the fifth most fantasy points to running backs. They gave up the second most rushing yards to running backs. Derrick Henry, the, the one concern with Derrick Henry, when you're playing him on DraftKings, this is the concern right here. Like the, the usage in the passing game is never great for Derrick Henry. But it feels like every week when he does catch a couple passes, he makes the, the best out of it. And he caught you know two passes. I'm pretty sure he had a, a screen pass that he took for 46 yards. I wish the Titans would just throw the ball more to Derrick Henry. Like, I don't know why they don't. The guy is incredible in space. He's so tough to tackle. Just get him the ball in space. Get him a screen pass. Get him a couple screen passes a game, and he'll make the most out of it. We know the volume's going to be there. The, the pass game usage might not be the best. Like, he's not going to get 8, 9, 10 targets. But he might get four or five targets. We know he's going to get probably 15 to 20 carries on the ground. And this Chargers team, again, they were super you know, poor against the run last season. Henry's at home. Even though there's slight dogs here, as long as this game is relatively you know, close, we expect Henry to be on the field for a, a large majority of the snaps. And at 7400 he's not super expensive. Like We're not having to pay that, that high price tag for Derrick Henry. So I do like Derrick Henry quite a bit at 7400 this week. And I think, you know, this is another game that is expected to be relatively high scoring. Right now, the, the Chargers and, and Tennessee game does have a 45 total. Not super high, but it's you know, relatively high. We can look for a run back in our, with our Derrick Henry play. You know, you can build, obviously you can build, you know, quarterback wide receiver stacks and then a run back on the other side. But you can also build many correlated stacks. You can play like a running back and a receiver from the same game. Or you can play like a receiver and a tight end from the same game. Let's look at, you know, someone we could correlate with on the Chargers side. You could obviously go to Austin Eckler. I don't love playing two running backs from the same game. I think there's a little bit of negative correlation there. But obviously with Eckler's you know, pass game upside in a scenario where Tennessee gets to a big lead, that's obviously going to be great for Derrick Henry. And that's probably going to be good for Austin Eckler as well because he'll be out there catching passes. Again, you could play Eckler in this lineup if you wanted to. But I'm looking at these Chargers receivers once again. I was pretty high on the Chargers receivers last week. They didn't have the greatest game. Keenan Allen put up 14 draftings points. He did get nine targets. Six catches for 76 yards. He is 7,100. I think he's a strong play once again this week in a matchup that I do like against this Tennessee secondary. I do expect Tennessee secondary to struggle once again this season like they did last season. You also have Mike Williams at 5,700. And Mike Williams we actually used in our first look lineup last week. And I like him again this week. I mean, the price tag didn't move. He didn't have the greatest game, obviously. He only got five targets, four catches for 45 yards. But he did get injured in their game last week. He did have to leave for a little bit, he, so he did miss some time um, because he was, I think he was in the medical tent, and then he had to go to the locker room. He did wind up returning, but he missed some time last week because of injury. Doesn't seem like that injury is going to you know, affect him this week. He looks like he's you know, not even on the injury report, should be good to go this week. And again, this matchup's great. Tennessee secondary last season was very vulnerable. They gave up a ton of fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. The price tag on Mike Williams is just too cheap, in my opinion, for the upside that we know this guy has. Now, I know he didn't have the greatest game in week one, but you can't just play everyone that went off in week one. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. You got to look at guys, even if they had a bad week one performance. Some of these guys, most of these guys are probably going to bounce back after a bad 
week one performance. And you know, Mike Williams is a candidate. I do like to bounce back here. So let's correlate him with our Derrick Henry play. And now we've got even you know more correlated lineup. We got a quarterback wide receiver stack with a run back option, and then we have a mini correlated stack of Derrick Henry and Mike Williams from the same game. Now we can look at some other running back plays, maybe try and build out like another running back wide receiver correlated stack. We don't have to do that, but there's some other running back plays that I definitely like this week. I mean, you got Travis Etienne in, in that good matchup against Kansas City in what should be a you know, relatively high scoring game. I think Etienne looks solid here. Aaron Jones is someone I do like quite a bit this week against Atlanta. I don't think Atlanta's defense is going to be that great. You know, this game's being played in Atlanta, so it's in a dome, good you know, playing conditions. This is another game that I think could definitely wind up being higher scoring. I know the total in this game is not super high. Um, the total right now sits at it sits at 41, but I definitely think this is a game that could go over that 41 total. I mean, Jordan Love looked great in week one. The Falcons offense is definitely not the most exciting, and they're not going to put up a lot of points every week, but this Green Bay offense looked great week one. I don't think this Atlanta defense is very good. I think Green Bay can put up some points here. Aaron Jones did not get amazing usage in week one, but he was very efficient with the touches that he got. Uh, averaged over you know four and a half yards per carry, got a rushing touchdown, also had a screen pass that he took for you know like 50 yards, got a receiving touchdown last week. He did get injured in last week last week's game, so this will be something we do have to monitor heading into this week. But I definitely like Aaron Jones at 6,600. We know the volume, the usage is going to be there, even though he will split some time with AJ Dillon. For the most part, we can we can project Jones for you know 15, 16, 17 touches a week, if not more than that. Um, obviously, in a scenario where Aaron Jones doesn't play. A.J. Dillon at 5,900 would be probably the best running back play on the slate. But we don't have that news right now. Recording this video on Tuesday, we can obviously make changes at the, as the week goes on. I do provide more updated uh, DFS content over on Patreon you know, throughout the week if you guys want to check that out. But let's plug in Aaron Jones into our first look lineup. I like to spot quite a bit for Aaron Jones. I like the, the usage he should get on a weekly basis. And the price tag is not super high either at 6,600. Um, now, we've filled out both of our running back spots. We can talk about a few more running backs, though, that, that I think are in, in play this week. Joe Mixon didn't have the greatest week one performance, but again, volume is king in NFL, and Joe Mixon's going to get the volume. I mean, he got 13 carries. He got five targets. That feels like a floor for Joe Mixon. I think we should project him for probably 14, 15 carries a week and probably like you know five, six targets a week. So at 6,500, I'm interested in Joe Mixon for sure. James Conner, we might talk about later. I think James Conner at 6,200. In a pretty good matchup against the Giants. Looks solid here. I mean, I know the Cardinals are not expected to be very good this season, but James Conner is going to get volume. I mean, there's really not many, comp there's not much competition for touches behind him. And, you know, you look at week one, he got 14 carries, he got five targets. That feels like a, a weekly thing for James Conner. I mean, projecting him for 13 to 15 carries and four to five targets is pretty reasonable. He should get that almost every week. And in scenarios where the Cardinals are playing from behind, you can see even more targets for James Conner. He gets usage both on the ground and in the passing game. So he's someone I definitely like this week at 6,200. Um, you know, there's a couple other running backs that are in play, like, you know, James Cook, I don't mind at 6,100. We talked about David Montgomery. I think he'll get some ownership. Kenneth Walker on the other side of that game at 5,800, I think looks solid as well. But let's go ahead and talk about some wide receivers real quick. Now, before we talk about wide receiver, I think we do need to plug in a cheap defense into our lineup. So we have... We have 4,800 left per player for three spots. Usually, I always like to pay down at defense. Defense is a position that's just so tough to predict. It's really hard to, to you know, figure out which defense is going to score the most points on a given basis. You saw the Cowboys put up 37 DK points in week one. I mean, that can happen any week. It's not something you expect to happen, but any defense can go off. Um, usually, I like to look for cheap defenses at home in somewhat decent matchups. The, the first defense that stood out to me was the Cardinals. I know the Cardinals had a really big week one performance against Washington. Don't know if I'm expecting, I'm not expecting 19 drafting points again, but they're playing at home. They're facing Daniel Jones, who was terrible in week one. That might have been because of the Cowboys defense, but you know, Jones was taking sacks. He was throwing picks. I don't think Daniel Jones is like the best quarterback. I mean, he's definitely a guy that will turn the ball over. So at 2,600, I like the Cardinals defense for cheap this week. You know, just kind of to plug into our first look lineup. And now we can kind of see where, we, where we're at. So we got 5,900 left per player. For our last two spots, there's a lot of ways we could go here. Like we could try and build out another correlated mini stack with a like a wide receiver and a tight or a wide receiver and a running back from the same game, or like two wide receivers from the same game. There's a lot of wide receiver plays. You know, we're not going to be able to get anyone at the top here. Obviously, these guys at the top are you know very strong plays. Steph Diggs, Jamar Chase, and Mon Ross St. Brown. I played Jamar Chase in my main lineup last week, and he dudded. it. I'm sure he's going to go off this week. I, I, this will, this will be what happens. I won't play Jamar Chase this week, and then he'll go off because that's just what happens. It seems like 
every time I play someone and they have a bad game, the next week they go off when I don't play them again. But Jamar Chase in a matchup against Baltimore, I think is you know, prime to bounce back. Really like the matchup for Amon, uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. If you wanted to play him in the, the Geno Smith stacks, you could do that. But we got to go a little bit cheaper. We got to look at like some 5K receivers. There was a couple guys that stood out to me you know, in this 5K range. Brandon Ayuk had a really big week one performance. Don't know if I'm expecting like 36 DraftKings points again from him, but you know, 5,800, you could look there. Debo Samuel, though, is someone that I do have some interest in. And especially if people are going to chase the, the week one performance from Brandon Ayuk, I mean, Obviously, I don't think Brandon Ike's going to get a lot of ownership, but by, by some chance if he does, I mean, Debo Samuel would be the perfect leverage play off of Brandon Ayuk. Samuel, we know, is going to be out there for a large majority of the snaps. He's going to get the volume in week one. I think he played like, it was kind of a blowout against Pittsburgh, but I'm pretty sure he did play like a, a large majority of the snaps. Yeah, 87% of the snaps for Debo Samuel. He's a guy that can do it, you know, in the air and on the ground. Like, they will give Debo Samuel some rushing attempts. He doesn't get as many carries as he used to. They used to actually just use him as, like, their backup running back. They don't really have to do that now because they have CMC and they have Eli Mitchell. But Debo Samuel probably projects for seven to eight targets a week and probably, you know, a couple carries as well. At 5,600 with his explosive big play ability, this is the guy that I always like to target in GBPs. You know, he will have some floor games, kind of like he did last week, but... The chances, you know, he's one of these guys that can put up like 30 drafting points any week. He can go for 100 plus yards. He can get you multiple touchdowns. At 5,600, I definitely like Devo Samuel as kind of a mid-range wide receiver. He was someone that really stood out to me taking a first look at the pricing for uh, for week two. And if we play Devo Samuel, that leaves us 6,200 in our flex spot. And the guy that really, you know, stood out to me when I was finishing up this lineup was James Conner. He correlates with our Cardinals defense play. Um, anytime you're playing a running back and a defense together from the same team, that, there's some correlation there because in a scenario where the Cardinals get a big lead, they're going to be running the ball a lot with James Conner, and then that means that the Giants are going to have to be throwing a lot, and if the Giants are throwing a lot, that's good for our Cardinals defense because that means a chance for sacks, a chance for strip sacks, and for pick sixes for interceptions. So playing a defense and a running back from the same team is some correlation, and I do like playing James Conner in this lineup. Correlates with our Cardinals play, and we talked about James Conner. I mean, I know it's not the most sexy play to play someone on the Cardinals. I don't think the Cardinals' offense is going to be very good this season, but James Conner is going to get the volume. He got 19 touches in Week 1. He's going to project for probably 17 to 20 touches on a weekly basis. I don't know if his efficiency is going to be great, but he's going to get probably all the goal line work. Even in a scenario where the Cardinals are playing from behind, you expect Conner to get usage in the passing game. So at 6,200 in a decent matchup against the Giants, I definitely have interest in James Conner this week. And again, that does correlate with our uh, our Cardinals defense play. So we've got our uh, kind of our first look GVP lineup built out, guys. We've got a Geno Smith stack with Tyler Lockett, run back with Sam Laporta. We've got a correlated stack of Derrick Henry and Mike Williams. We've got Aaron Jones as a one-off. we got Debo Samuel as a one-off. And then we have a correlated uh, stack of the Cardinals defense and James Conner. So... This is kind of what I like, taking a first look at this slate, guys. Um, I know I didn't talk really about the tight end position. We kind of plugged in our tight end you know, spot already with Laporta. There's obviously, you know, tight ends kind of straightforward. If you can pay up for Kelsey or Andrews, you could do that. But for this video, we really want to, I want to talk about like roster construction, building out GBP lineups and going through that thought process. More so just like, you know, breaking down every position. Because if I, if I sit here and talk about every player at every position, the video is going to be four hours long. And I don't want to do that. I more so want to talk about the construction of a GBP lineup, how you should go about it. And definitely, you know, if you're playing GBPs for NFL this season, look at the, the winning lineups every week. Look at how they're constructed, the stacks they build, the, the you know, correlated stacks they do. And you'll see you know, pretty much every week the winning GBP lineups are always going to involve some sort of stacking. So when you're building out GBP lineups, you want to think about stacking. Hopefully, you know, throughout this video, we talked about stacks you could build and how you should be building out your GBP lineups. Now, don't just play this lineup in a GBP and expect to win a bunch of money. That's not how this works. The more so, the, the reason of this video is more so to talk about the process of building out a lineup and you know just how I go about it. Um, but yeah, guys, week two, it's you know slowly coming. We got obviously a few more days. We got about five, six more days till the main slate starts. But obviously, I'll be pumping out a lot of content throughout the week. I'll have videos up for prize picks. So we'll be talking some props I like uh, for the Thursday night game, for the Monday night, or for the two Monday night games, and for the Sunday slate. And I'll also have videos up for the showdown slates on DraftKings. So I'll have a video up for Thursday Night Football, and I'll have a video up for Monday Night Football. So if you're playing the DraftKings showdown slates, I do provide content for those. Uh, those will be on the channel you know, later this week, obviously. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I appreciate you watching, guys. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Hit that subscribe button as well if you have not yet. 
And be sure to go check out Prospects, sponsor of the video. You guys can sign up for Prospects. You can use my promo code, promo code NOAA. When you do sign up, you will get your first deposit matched up to $100. When you sign up for Prospects with my promo code, be sure to check them out if you guys have not yet. But that's all that I got for this week, for this week two slate, guys. Hopefully, we can all win some money tonight. Appreciate you guys watching the video, supporting the content as always. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, best of luck this week.